Hey kids, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, if like me, you're a bit of an anorak as far as the BMW R1200 is concerned, you're gonna to wanna to stick around and watch this video because today I'm lucky enough to have the brand new R1250 GS in the man cave as well as my R1200 GS. And in this video, I wanna go through what the subtle changes are. There's little things that uh, maybe other reviews on the 1250 haven't told you. So what's the difference between the R1250 and the R1200 GS? This is the anorak's guide. Okay, so I'm lucky enough, as I say, to have here in the garage this, the uh, brand new R1250 GS. It only came out, uh, well, about a month or so ago. It's already available in the dealers. This is one of the first demonstrators in the country. So thanks very much to my friends at Barnstormer in Maidenhead for letting me borrow this one for the evening to have a look at. Uh, there are a few things on this bike that have changed uh, over the years uh, that you may not know about if you've just been watching reviews and reading reviews in the magazine. So if you're a bit of an anorak like me and you like to know all the nitty gritty detail, this video is probably for you. So let's start pointing out some of the things that have changed in on this bike versus the other one. First off, uh, let's start down the front end and let me show you uh, one thing I've noticed. So this here, obviously the front beak, this design here has changed slightly. So here's the, uh, here's the front beak. Look at the little, um, inlet bit if you like or, or this bit here on the front beak on the new one okay got that remember that and now let's go over to my machine here and there's the front beak on mine look it's got like a w cut out so it's a w cut out on the old one uh, and then if we go back to the new one there we go it's just a straight cut out okie dokie see i told you this is going to be a bit of an anorak guy. okay so that's one thing while we're on the front next thing then uh what we've got is a bit of a change uh, underneath the windscreen. If you look here, look, this is the new machine. You see we've got this black plastic bit just here underneath the windscreen, this black plastic. Let's go and have a look at the old bike. Here we go. We've got a separate piece here, and this is actually Perspex, look. Now, I think this probably looks better, uh, but actually it's a bit of a pain to clean because you have to get sort of up under it with your fingers, and that's probably why BMW have changed it, I think. So that's probably a good change, although I did actually prefer the looks of this. It's a bit of a pain to keep clean. All right, what else have I spotted that's different? Well, there's a few things which aren't necessarily just d down to the uh, brand new machine, but have changed in newer generations than this. This is a 2014 model year bike. Obviously, this is a 2019 model year bike. So five years difference between them. There are a few other little subtle changes. So uh, the obvious one uh, is the way that the panels and the fuel tank looks let's show you on the new one here we go notice this sort of slab sided fuel tank here on the new bike if we look at my machine you'll see it's got much more complicated sort of contours and so on here uh, and also this front bit is quite different if we, again if you look at the old machine there we are that's the r1200 and then we go and have a look at the new one completely different shaping at the front here uh, the next thing that strikes me that's different is the air intake we've got this sort of cheese grater affair on the new one if we go back to the old one We've just got literally a hole as an intake right there. But again, uh, I don't know actually which one's the bet, which one looks better overall as far as the front and the slab sided. I sort of think actually I might prefer the old one, but maybe that's just because I'm more familiar with it. But it's uh, interesting that they've changed in that way. Okay, some other things I've spotted. If we go to the back end of the bike, and this is a very subtle one that you won't see anywhere else, I think. If you look at the back end of my uh, 2014 model year, we see we've got these bits that, these big bits of plastic that poke out. And then we go to the new machine. You see, we haven't got those bit, little big bits of plastic. We've got these little bits with the slots in now, which is interesting. Now, another thing that's actually quite interesting and useful about the new versus old, uh, if, you've, if you have the panniers for the old one, the Vario cases, they fit on these lugs here, okay? And also onto here. The good news is, on the new bike, it's exactly the same. We've got exactly the same fittings. So uh, so that's excellent. If you've already bought the uh, the new or the, or the Vario cases, you don't have to buy them again. You can just use them on the new bike. There are some other uh, little changes as well that I've noticed. So something like, if we look around here at the switch gear on my older bike, here we go. You'll see it's all uh, it done in gray. Here we go, and in gray. If we look at the new bike, you'll see that they've done that down slightly and it's now in a more subtle sort of black which i think looks quite good i think the black is definitely better of course we've got the tft and of course we've got the nav 5 whereas on the old bike if we get whip over there again sorry that was a nav 6 on the new one this is the nav 5 and the original um dials which weren't very good on the original bike they're perfectly fit for purpose but they're quite difficult to to read so there's another little change uh all right that's pretty much most of what i've spotted uh what else oh of course the big change is um is the engine on the new bike so the new one has the shift cam technology so that means there's a little subtle change on the outside of the bike you probably know about this one if you look at the cam covers here we are look this is the new bike it says shift cam i don't know if you can see that on there and it's got this sort of uh, l-shaped plastic affair whereas the uh, previous model bikes 
look like that. We've just got this this um, black bit here and it doesn't say shift cam, obviously. So that's another little difference. Of course, the real main differences in the bikes are internally to the engine. There are lots of changes to the engine on this machine. Uh, it's had a, had a lot of work doing to make it more smooth uh, and to make it Euro 5 compliant, actually. So I'll just get my notes. I'll tell you some of the changes that they've made on the new machine. So some of the other technical changes to the engine, other than the um, shift cam that we all know about now, are things like, apparently there's, it's now got a toothed cam chain uh, rather than a roller chain. Your guess is as good as mine as to what that is, but presumably it's a good thing. Optimised oil supply and piston based cooling, it says. Basically what that means is, when they originally went liquid cooling on these bikes, um, they were quite clever because they've got these little radiators tucked up underneath here two of those uh, and uh, then the cooled water that comes out of the radiators actually goes along channels and is actually selectively sent to the piston heads here so hence you've still got these cooling vanes that do work in an air-cooled manner on the original bike well of course the new the new bike having a slightly different uh, shaped cylinder head because the shift te cam technology means they've had to change the cooling a bit but uh, i think basically they're still saying roughly the same thing you've got uh, actual air fins here for air cooling uh, as well as water cooling in the cylinder head itself via very selective placing of uh, water cooling channels so i think that's what that's all about okay what else was there that i picked up uh the twin jet injection valve and knock sensor uh, i think uh, the knock sensor uh, and then all that stuff basically means that this bike will run on slightly more um, or, or less refined fuel, if you like. If you're going to ride it somewhere, you know, in a country that has slightly dodgy fuel, this one's going to do it better than, than the old bike. So, yeah, so all sorts of changes in terms of the engine. There are others as well, uh, which, which makes this engine run basically a lot, uh, a lot smoother than the original bike. So uh, all sorts of things make this a better bike overall. In the round, whether this is, uh, you know, if it's worth chopping in your old bike to get a new one, Personally, I don't think it is, but you know, you have to make your own decision on that. Now, I've only been uh, messing around looking at this bike over the last uh, few hours, uh, just as I've had it for this evening in the garage. The other change, actually, or the other thing that I think is a bit of a retro step with the new bike, which is just worth pointing out, is uh, on the brakes. For some reason, on the front brakes on the new bike, it doesn't come with Brembo ones. Some may do, but this one doesn't. So if you look at this, here we go, it's uh, BMW branded. Uh, it works absolutely fine. But uh, when you consider on the uh, original bike uh, down here, I've got these with Brembo written on. Now, they may or may not work any differently. These brakes, in fact, are absolutely fine on the new bike. But I think if I was paying 18 grand for a new bike, I'd probably want them to say Brembo. So that's pretty much it. Bit of a silly little video, really. But I just thought I'd point out the things that I've noticed that are different on the, on the bike as I've had it here and have been able to sort of examine it for those amongst you that are sort of fellow GS anoraks like myself. Of course, there's also electronic changes. So the new bike has things like hill hold assist. My bike, that was never available uh, when I got it. Uh, there are other electronics changes as well. Things like dynamic traction control, uh, ABS Pro. Um, it's got an LED DRL in here as standard, but I had that as an option on my bike. It's got the intelligent emergency call button, which you may have seen on the screen, on the um, handlebars there. So if you get into trouble, you can call the BMW assist people. Um, what else is there? B -b 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 We've got riding modes pro as well. And things that are provided as standard, like the quick uh, shift assist pro that I had to put on as, a, as an option on mine. But there we go. In summary, that's kind of what you get extra on the new bikes over the old ones in case you're considering is it worth going new or do you want to buy a second hand one what's kind of the difference because certainly there's a big price difference all right just a bit of a silly little video hope it's been of some interest look forward to speaking to you again soon till then this has been the mist and fly cheerio